From time to time, as the journey develops, I will state a sum of money in American dollars. This sum will represent the growing expenditure on the world arms race, taken as from the first minute of the film and based upon a world expenditure of $1.5 million each minute. Mozambique, until 1975, a totally subjugated and ruthlessly exploited colony of Portugal and its white settlers, who refused to even permit the Mozambican women to attend school. In 1975, after 10 years of struggle, the liberation movement Frelimo took over the government. The Portuguese, having bled the country, abandoned it almost to the man, taking with them their entire infrastructure. Administrators, teachers, doctors, farmers, everything, everybody. This is an abandoned white colonialist farm now taken over by the cooperative. But it's certain that the numerous policemen assigned to the security at the summit will look for details like they do during all the trips made by Ronald Reagan, trips that require such elaborate logistics. As part of its overall plan to destabilize Angola, Zimbabwe and Mozambique, the present South African government is backing a vicious guerrilla movement in Mozambique called the MNR, the Mozambique National Resistance. The MNR now occupy and isolate large areas of Mozambique, seriously weakening its economy and conducting a campaign of terror against its villagers. In 1981, South African planes violated Mozambique airspace and bombed the outskirts of the capital city, Maputo. The continuing South African support for the MNR is in direct violation of the Nkomati Accord signed between South Africa and Mozambique in the spring of 1984. When Ronald Reagan travels, all the White House moves with him. According to the American system, when a president leaves the country, he cannot delegate his authority within the country or abroad. He is in constant communication with Washington and the rest of the world. As cultivators, we have had problems here. Since 1981, when the co-op was founded, we have had pigsties but no animals, and the pump to draw water from the well doesn't work. 
The officials from the cooperative union began to mend it. And then they told us they had no pump for us. You will always see a man near him carrying a small suitcase that is called the football, which would permit him to release a counter-attack. Over here in the background is uh, the nuclear weapons assembly plant, and in the foreground is the famous white train. This is the link. Uh, this is the train that takes those assembled warheads um, to various bases including the Trident submarine base and other points in the country. I went to the Amarillo train yard and asked the man when the white train was coming through and he looked at me with a sense of shock and outrage that such a question would be asked and he told me they are not allowed to give any information whatsoever about the comings and goings of the great white train. We are now walking along the tracks of the white train towards the gates of the base at Bangor. We will continue this walk throughout the journey until we arrive. Uh, we have the readiness uh, where we have, for example, one or two of the things highlighted. Uh, Aircrew flying hours are up now, uh, and uh, ship steaming hours are up. Uh, the combat readiness of the various units has increased by 39.5% uh, in the three years. We've increased our mobility, funded uh, uh, five of the C-5 cargo planes, 20 of the tanker planes, and we have the uh, modernization of the conventional forces, uh, funded 2,300 of the tanks, 1,800 fighting vehicles, 466 light armored, light armored vehicles, uh, 111 F-15s, 384 F-16s. These have been added to the force, and uh, with the Navy, the deployable battle force when we came, numbered 479, uh, in the end of this fiscal year, it would be 525, and we requested another 23 of the triad. We've now deployed three of the new Trident submarines, and we funded eight more through this year, fiscal year. Uh, we proceeded with the development of the missile, and we've completed procurement of the Trident 1 missile for the, uh, that will ultimately be replaced by the number 2. And we've done a lot of preliminary United work States the Secretary of Defense, Caspar Weinberger. On the small, single-headed uh, ICBM, uh, and we funded procurement of 18 B-1 bombers through this year, and asked for 40 for 1985, which is the normal plan development of that program. We've begun deploying the B-52 bombers with a cruise missile capability, uh, and we've made significant progress in upgrading in every way the strategic communication control systems and in increasing their survivability. talk a lot about hardware, but people are the heart of our armed forces. General John Vasey, Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, three years, uh, recruitment and retention uh, remain excellent. This nation needs to continue to make military life attractive, or we simply won't keep good armed forces. It's important to remember that uh, while we're making progress, the Soviets are not standing still, as you can see from the Secretary's charts and graphs. They continue to field increasingly capable equipment in already large and modern conventional forces. And this year, they will uh, looks like they'll conclude a significant phase in the modernization of their ICBMs, while we have yet to put one of our new peacekeepers in the silo. 
the Soviets continued to fish in the troubled waters of the resource-rich Third World. When I look at the Soviet forces, I see forces which are large and very capable. They're offensive forces, and they're uh, increasingly capable of achieving the Soviets' wartime objectives. And I see their willingness to use those forces uh, both for coercion and, uh, and in actual war. When I look at our forces, I see that our forces are designed for deterrence. That's been our strategy, and it's a sensible strategy. We hope we can make it clear to the Soviets or any other aggressors that they can't achieve their objectives by war or by the threat of war. The German newspaper, Die Zeit, recently published an article showing the difference between the increase in the quality of life since 1945 and the increase in the quality of weapons. Since 1945, the quality of world education has increased by a factor of between two to four. The range of weapons by a factor of 262. Life expectancy has improved by a factor of 0 0.3. The area that can be destroyed by weapons by a factor of 250. This is the civilian and military airport of Werness, lying next to the small town of Stjordal on the west coast of Norway, near Trondheim. Werness is one of approximately 10 such airfields in Norway, which are directly or indirectly, no one quite knows which, involved in NATO and American nuclear strategies. It is believed that Venice is perhaps one of several so-called COB bases, that's C-O-B, and might be tied in with an American naval strategy codenamed Invictus. Uh, but again, no one is sure, since no one living here has been told. <laughs> の6日前後は 
あの佐伯さんはここにおられたわけです。私はあのいつか。Were you here in Hiroshima on August 6? だからその日曜日の午後に。No, on Sunday 5th August, I went to see my son who was evacuated outside the city. I planned to come back on the bus that evening. But my son cried and cried when I was about to leave, so I stayed. Planning to get the first bus the next morning. But when the next morning came, I missed the bus. I was chatting with my sister. It was a little after 7 a.m. when the alarm went, and then these planes flew over. They were B 29s. Then suddenly the flash came, and I lay on the ground. Because I was very hot. Almost at the same time, there was a big sound which blew off and broke all the windows and sliding doors. Looking around, I found my child trapped by the collapsed ceiling. I pulled him out with all my energy. When I looked up at the mountain again, a pillar of flames was climbing. だから、会社になって そう、帰ってる途中ですね、引っ張り出して。そして飛行機が飛んでいたあの山を見た時にね、驚いたんです。もう何とも言えない炎が怒り狂うように、こう燃え上がってるわけですからね。Hidden in the hills and valleys around Stjordal. Are dumps of pre stocked American military equipment for use by US forces in the event of a war in Europe? There may be some stocks hidden near this home. No one knows. The first of these pictures is of Hiroshima. Uh, this picture was taken at uh, about three hours after the first atom bomb exploded over Hiroshima on August the 6th, 1945. You can see the smoke, black smoke coming up from the fires in the background. The bomb destroyed about 90% of the 76,000 buildings in Hiroshima. And remember, these pictures show the effect of a small bomb by today's standards. You can see the um, people here shocked, dazed. They're sitting down. They just, they, they, they just don't know what to do. They just had oil to dress the people with. This uh, schoolgirl here with the white dress, white school tunic. Twenty years later, she was found to have survived. But you can, you can see the dirt, the blood, the, the shreds in the clothes, especially, especially here. This. Uh, Hair, straight from shock, probably. People had no idea what had happened. This is Nagasaki. Um, the bomb here exploded uh, three days later. It was a, a more powerful bomb, 20 kiloton bomb. People were instantly carbonized by the flash. And you see these people walking through the ruins. They are civilians and soldiers, and they had no idea that the radiation was coming up from the soil. And probably many of these people died afterwards, although they had survived the attack first of all. For example, these uh, this group of schoolgirls here. 
they are probably dying of radiation sickness. The blood cells, the cells in their body are being, are rapidly being, um, dis are, are going into destruction, are destroyed. And they are dehydrating. The water is running out of their bodies. And they were asking for water. And the more water that they drank, the sooner they died. They were school children. This shows the strength of the flash here. The flash came from this direction, the bomb, and burnt the shadow of this wheel of a gas tank, burnt the shadow onto the side of the gas tank. Like that. So you can imagine the heat that struck, struck the human flesh. This is the back of a woman. It's, and she had no, no chance to survive and she had to, People like this lay in excruciating agony because if they moved their position, uh, it was ter terrible suffering for them. She died soon afterwards. This is another picture to show the strength of the flash. This Japanese kimono this woman was wearing. The pattern of the kimono and even the colors were seared, burnt into the flesh from the flash of a small one small atom bomb. This is a, a, a really terrible picture of a young girl, probably, I'm sure, a school girl. And uh, she's been hit by the flash and hit by the wind. And the result is it's pulled the skin from her body and it, the, the skin is hanging in shreds. She is in a naval hospital here, but she certainly died very soon after this picture. Many, many school children suffered terribly at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. a school. You can see hit by blast here and here are is what remains of 133 school children. And the last picture here is of a family cremating one of their own, burning one of their dead in a, in a field near Nagasaki. そして私はその日からあの炎を見た時に大きな声で泣き出したの。広島がやられたって言ってね。泣いたんですね。そしたら姉が出てきてね、あれ広島じゃない。これの軍港がやられたんだから大きな声で泣くのはやめろと言うわ
and board one way take one in board ano yokujitsu wa ne dojitsu ue ni kaeranagatta hito ga atsukochi noru yo ni jouho ga haitte kita mon desu kara ue ni jitto shite irukoto ga dekinakute ne there were many burnt bodies scattered everywhere, and among them was a horse with a man still clinging to its back. The fact that a horse and its rider were killed together like that was really upsetting. That image is still very strongly printed on my mind, the human being and the animal together. Teruku Shinya, age 39, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Mori. I remember when my neighbor came home, the skin of his hand was hanging off, like a glove. It looked like a glove was slipping off his hand. I remember this person coming home and saying, I hate Americans. That too was very upsetting, and I'll always remember that. Depuis que Ronald Reagan a été victime d'un attentat le 30 mars 81, les mesures de sécurité se sont resserrées autour de lui. Elles sont devenues hermétiques. Since Ronald Reagan was victim of an attempt on his life, security measures have increased around him. They've become hermetic. For more than a week, the majority of the policemen have been posted at different strategic locations, such as the airport, the Grand Théâtre, and also the Château Frontenac. At this particular location, they watch closely the top floors where the American president and his entourage are staying. À ce dernier endroit, il surveille rigoureusement les étages supérieurs où logeront le président américain et sa suite. Impossible d'y mettre pied. Quand il est à bord d'Air Force One, while he is aboard the Air Force One, he can stay in touch with the world through telecommunications provided by the White House. His armored limousine is shipped well in advance and is equipped with the same sophisticated telecommunications system. Every time he has to go somewhere, he will know minute by minute what he is expected to say and what he is not expected to say. Since December, several teams have arrived in Quebec City, a group of military experts who specialize in telecommunications, security agents and also some media consultants have been in Quebec City for two weeks. Pool number one, post of 24 Canadian, 24 American will leave that position once an RCMP honor guard is in place along the red carpet, this, this dark uh, stretch here. And pool number one will walk across and come to this position so that you can get a shot of the four principals walking down, being the President, Mrs. Regan, the Prime Minister, and Mrs. Mulroney. And uh, the, well, the show really starts at uh, 2.55, when the, when Air Force One actually cuts its engine. It will land about 2.50. One hundred and twenty million dollars.
He is always followed by police vans and cars, occupied by secret service agents, heavily armed. But, however, it is difficult to determine in which limousine the president will be found, since as a means of diversion they organize fake processions of limousines. What is left for the president is to work on his French. Between you and me, until death tears us apart. A number of armored vehicles had been brought from Europe and were taken to Mururoa. Inside, they had installed some machines, as if it was some kind of person. It had a heart, lung, a brain, eyes, and it was tested to see what the bomb would do to it at different distances. And I can tell you clearly, there were dogs, there were rat-like animals, there were bird-like things. These animals were also tested, and I can tell you of a certainty, there is not a single animal able to survive through atomic exposure. The first assault is the explosive force, like when we hear a thunderclap. There are people whose ears are injured from the clap. Their lungs can burst from the extent of the force. The American Department of Defense, or DOD, has an equivalent in Britain called the Ministry of Defense, or MOD. Every time the MOD submitted new plans, uh, they were enlarged. Uh, at first, you see, the um, local council uh, agreed to this extension. This was before the local community council um, became frightened at the prospect. And because we fought it, uh, we had, I think, four lots of plans um, were submitted, and each one was bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is why, of course, we have grave doubts about what they really intend to do at Stornoway. One hundred and thirty million dollars. Once I got to the bus street, I found a lot of injured people with few clothes on, walking on it. I went running on towards Hiroshima. After 20 or 30 minutes, I saw a man with no clothes on, but covering himself with a galvanized iron sheet. I avoided my eyes from him and could have kept on going, but I don't know why. I stopped him and asked him what part of Hiroshima was damaged. He stared at me and said, Aren't you Toshiko? Toshiko 
I was surprised and puzzled because I couldn't tell who he was. His face was badly swollen and he was covered with dust. But then I, I recognized him as my brother. And he told me that he was sleeping in the morning. Our mother came to wake him up. And then suddenly there was a flash and a big sound and the house collapsed. He was buried beneath the building. Then he fainted. Each time plans have been submitted to the council for planning permission and have expanded in every occasion. They started off with a relatively innocuous planning application which went to the council and as Smeva says was simply nodded through. As time went by, then there were more plans, changes to the original plans, more changes to the changes, more changes to the changes, and gradually it began to expand. It only came to light, I think it was, um, once the local community association had set out to try and discover what the situation actually was, became sufficiently concerned about it, as Mavis says, to put pressure to bear on the council, so the council then reversed their original decision and started querying these plans themselves. And the Member of Parliament eventually raised it in Westminster. And having raised it in Westminster, was it 1980? I think it was about 1980. We raised it in Parliament, it emerged that there were plans for a £40 million extension. One hundred and thirty-two million dollars. Therefore, it is with this money that you wish to buy the pigs. We want them to give us the water pump so we can use it. We want them to repair the pigsties for us because they have been broken in some parts. Do you think this will be enough money? Well, we plan to get those fast-growing pigs. They take six months to be ready for sale. Each time the co-op union will come and take them away to sell for slaughter. When they have sold them, the check will be passed on to us and we shall deposit this in the bank. Which other animals would you like to keep? We want ducks, we want chickens. Do you have other problems here? Our problem is poverty. We are poor. We don't have the appropriate clothes to wear at home. We sweat a great deal cultivating in the fields, but there is very little soap available. We have to make do with half a bar from the rationing. Because of this, we don't feel free, independent and happy. We would be most grateful if you would help us in whatever way you can.